Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Dakota Franson, and welcome to another special episode of Specialist of the Strange. Last week, if you tuned in, we talked about the categorization of human hauntings. The labels that paranormal investigators use to describe how certain paranormal incidents manifest, so to speak. How the energy from our day-to-day lives can be imprinted on the environment around us if the conditions are just right. How some spirits are able to interact and some aren't. And how horror movie like situations with objects being thrown around the room by unseen forces can manifest and can be dealt with. So to continue this a very special series to continue this very special series we are going to discuss other types of hauntings. Incidents where the culprits of supernatural intent no, that shouldn't be the right way to phrase it. The supernatural forces at play. That sounds better. Potentially have absolutely no human influence whatsoever. That the beings involved may have potentially never been human. May have never even experienced what you and I would call life. These incidents are rare, but they are reported throughout history. So tonight, we are going to go into elemental and demonic hauntings. I know, I know. We talked about demonic hauntings before, but we're going to dig a little bit deeper into those subjects. How some of these spirits may in fact be beings from other worlds. We're going to discuss some of the theories. What to do should you ever come across these types of entities. What you can do to protect yourself, or maybe even gain their favor. You will want to listen in on this episode. Because as we divulge deeper into the special series, the reports are going to get stranger and stranger. So to bring you all up to speed on the knowledge I've acquired, throughout my investigations, my research. We're going to need to dig in deeper. Before I introduce you guys to my old team, the Paranormal Raider Force, and by listening in on these episodes, you will have acquired the information and knowledge that We wish we had when something came after us, nearly killed us. 
Whether or not you believe me is not my concern. That is not my job. My job is to simply help as many people as I can in whatever ways I can and spread the knowledge that I've acquired. So that maybe when the time comes when our understanding of the world becomes much clearer we may be able to discover the very foundations of our universe so make sure you listen in and listen carefully because this is not one you're going to want to miss Hey everyone, Dakota Franson here, Specialist of the Strange. I just wanted to come with you real quick about potentially doing your own podcast. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? Maybe you got a lot of questions like, how do I record? How do I get my show into all these apps that are out there? How can I make money? There are probably several thousand, thousand, thousand other questions about getting this show off the ground that you have been formulating and communicating in your mind. And I'm here to tell you that there is a very simple answer to this. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing your show. And best of all, it is 100% free. Get all the perks from the other guys without having to pay for subscription fees. And best of all, it is easy. And in fact, Anchor can match you up with sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast right now. Which means you can get Paid doing what you love. Isn't that the fucking dream, my friends? In fact, that's actually what I'm trying to do right now. By reading this ad for you. It is amazing. It helps ease the process for guests. Putting on music. Whatever you want to do. So if you want to start your podcast. Make some money doing it. Go to Anchor.fm slash start to join me and several other fabulous people already using Anchor. That's Anchor.fm slash start. And I cannot wait to hear you on the air. So, what are elemental spirits you may be asking me well the explanation's right there in the name they are spirits associated with the elements and I'm not talking there's plutonots for plutonium thoridians for thorium no 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 we're talking the classic alchemaic Sorry, it just had a brain fart there for a second. Alchemic elements. Earth, air, fire, water. By simply observing a lot of the information that is out there in folklore and in, well, first-hand accounts, a lot of elemental spirits are simply labeled as such by association. Let me give you some examples. Uh, let's see here. Fire elementals. They are also sometimes considered labeled as salamanders. Now you might be wondering, whoa, 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 wait a sec, wait a sec. You mean little lizards are associated with fire? How the hell did that happen? It's like, well, let me explain. 
back in times of antiquity, and you can find this within several cultures. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I had to sneeze there for a sec. Whenever there was a fire within nature, they would notice that all of a sudden, a bunch of these little lizards would come out of nowhere. And they thought, just by association, that those lizards were born because of that fire. The fire created them. So therefore, salamanders are associated as fire spirits. Let's see. Let's go through. I got my notes here real quick. See, we have earth elementals. Gnomes. Those little... You know, like garden gnomes, those are considered earth elementals. They tend to be mischievous in nature. You have water elementals. They tend to hang around bodies of water. Some, some cultures may refer to them as Kelpies. They are said to be able to appear as humans as well as small creatures. It is a lot of Elemental water elementals are actually said to be benevolent. They uh, they actually like and uh, aren't afraid to associate themselves with humans. And then we have we have air elementals, sometimes referred in some resources as sylphs. Said they, uh, you know, another example of air elementals can actually be considered fairies. They are considered, they prefer kind of isolated areas, mountaintops, deep in the forests. Prefer to be, they also prefer to be left alone. But have, on occasion, made themselves known. Fairies in general are said to also tend to make themselves known to the sort of a pure of heart situation where they'll show themselves as small children. And what do they all look like? And I'm kind of scatterbrained, uh, just give me a work with me here. Now, how can you tell? No. Uh, all right, you gotta breathe, breathe. You're doing fine. Anyway, now you may be wondering how can they be considered hauntings? Where, if you look through some of the some of the research. Not a lot of people actually think that these are real spirits. They're more manifestations or personified versions of the elements. And that's been an argument through a lot of mythology, as a matter of fact, that a lot of tales are just simply personified ways to explain natural events. Now, the reason why I categorized elementals under other hauntings is because they are extremely rare. In fact, the uh, a lot of elemental hauntings aren't actually associated within a sort of city setting. They are usually isolated, you know, away from people, 
where they won't be bothered much. Now, of course, as human population continues to expand, that is going to become less and less likely of a strategy. Of an effective strategy, I should say. Bear in mind that there, this is... Being that... Being the nature of these types of spirits is disputed in some circles. Hauntings are not very well documented. See, for example, signs that you have some form of earth elemental near you. Eyewitness reports claim that they see little men about two to three feet tall. Bearded, dressed in caps. They usually appear as male. Females are rare. They are... They tend to be mischievous. Sometimes even threatening towards humans. They... Tend... They can speak, but when they do, they kind of have a gruff to their voice. They don't exactly like man-made metals. They might actually hide metallic objects. It is some believed by some that they are associated they are attached to mines, caves, as well as some forms of crystals and rocks. Their presence can cause animals to act strange, even scaring them off. It is also said that they can cause a person to be suddenly overcome with a fear of being buried alive. There's an occultist by the name of Dion Fortune who also noted that agoraphobia, the fear of leaving home, may actually be a symptom of an elemental earth haunting. Water elementals. Some occultists believe that interactions with water elementals may lead to someone to try to commit suicide by drowning. Sudden, one of the signs is that they have a sudden fascination with water. In some cases, unexplained and repeated plumbing problems have been associated with these guys, as well as unexplained pools of water appearing. In places that they really shouldn't. Like I said, they also tend to stick around large bodies of water. In fact, if you're in Scotland, near just about Scotland, Ireland, areas like that, uh, nearly every body of water is associated with some sort of what they call Kelpie. And uh, they're usually malevolent and are blamed to cause drownings a lot. But people believe that it's simply an old wives' tale to uh, told the small children to get them to be careful around large bodies of water so they don't end up drowning. But nevertheless, it should be noted. Fire elementals. Here's where it gets interesting. Fortune, the unfortunate, have has claimed that unexplained eruption of fires are reported whenever a fire elemental is around. Humans developing a sudden obsession with fire is also said to be a symptom. Fireballs, self-reflecting orbs of light, and tongues of flame have been reported. Objects spontaneously catching fire has also been reported. I want to discuss this notion a little bit further later on. Often, now you may be wondering if uh, reports of spontaneous human combustion is associated with these guys. Well, it's hard to say. Some tests done in order to try to figure out what causes... Some people to seemingly just burst into flames 
Tests have indicated that certain chemical imbalances and alcoholism are possible sources. Others, and these have come from fire reports on the matter, any time it looks like somebody, say they were in bed and they caught fire, uh, a lot of the times it's later found out that uh, that person that caught fire was actually a smoker. And evidence around the house did indicate that they did not go outside whenever they felt the need to smoke. So they may have, a lot of times they believe what happens, they go to smoke, they're already half asleep, they start nodding off, drop the cigarette, catches on a flammable material, then they, it's bye bye bye. Air elementals seem to actually be the most popular, or at least the most reported. They have been known to throw and break objects, according to some literature. Air elementals may be associated with sexual assault. I'm going to want to look into this further, uh, possibly for a future episode. Air elementals can cause agitation and fighting amongst humans in the locale where they are active. Air elemental hauntings have also been associated with suicidal impulse to jump from high places. They have also been connected to abduction experiences and episodes of missing time. They are associated with joyful music, bell tones, and the sounds of happy parties. Animals associated with their presence include black dogs, horses, badgers, hares, and pigs. They have also been known to leave fairy rings in the fields where they frequent. Fairies are also associated with fairy forts, carns, henges, or stone circles. And certain hills. A lot of these regions where it is said that fairies are said to frequent. If you find a fairy circle and you try to approach it with a camera. You might actually notice that a lot of electrical equipment that you have on your person. May be messed with due to the electromagnetic fields within the area. Some sources also indicate possible fifth and sixth types of elementals. The fifth element, space, or sometimes referred to as ether or acacia. A lot of alchemists and philosophers have noted this as a form of element. Possible spirits that are involved with this include jinns, dakinis, Sometimes gray aliens and angels. So their notion of gray aliens being listed as a possible elemental further backs up the point that the, a lot of these entities that are noted within these types of hauntings are simply guilt by association situations. The sixth is a concept that a lot of you may be familiar with. Where it's labeled as an artificial elemental or even a tulpa. For those of you who don't know. A lot of Tibetan theosophical and Kabbalistic occult literature. There's a classification known as an artificial elemental or a tulpa. It was around 1929 where the word tulpa was actually first, is first described. From a woman by the name of Alexandria David Neal. She used the term tulpa to describe an elemental that she created using Tibetan meditation techniques. The same being in Kabbalistic literature is known as a golem. This is a considered a thought form created by a human and it's gained sentient life. The concept of tulpas can also indicate that we have the potential for creation itself. Unconscious thought, it has also been noted that sometimes thought forms can be created unconsciously. Whenever someone p obsesses on an idea, object, or person,
certain quote unquote magicians may actually create tulpas for specific pure purposes. However, it has been known that these types of situations can fire back. And some have also disputed that poltergeists can be, and this does make sense when you really think about it, poltergeists can actually be a form of tulpa that's come back for revenge. Now in previous episodes, I... mentioned that there may be a possible hierarchy or chain of evolution if you will about spirit how spirits can manifest as they age as they become more aware of their surroundings so on and so forth a lot of the spirits or entities beings if you will that are labeled as some form of elemental simply are associated because that's where they seem to be the most active. That's what elements seem to be the most responsive to those particular beings. So it is possible that some of the elementals may actually have a human element to them. But that particular quote-unquote human may have been dead for a long time and has gained a mastery over certain, over certain aspects of their reality. It does make you wonder if the water signs associated with some forms of zodiac, astral alignments, astrology may be a factor, though from what I've seen, say for example, uh, a particular person just happened to be a really good swimmer. In death, Responses to water may be more prevalent. That also could be associated if that particular person can be associated in a drowning. In some demonic cases, it has been noted that things seem to spontaneously combust with origin points that don't really make sense to the fire investigators. I want to go into it a bit more after this commercial break. Sorry if I seem to be kind of sidetracked here. I'm having to go through my notes to double check on elemental hauntings because it's actually disputed whether or not they actually exist. We have more information about demons than we do about elemental spirits. You can look through several Native American cultures. You can go through occult practices alchemy, and we can go back all the way to the times of ancient Greece, but the fact of the matter is they seem to be mere imagery. The types of entities that are associated with each of the elements are merely guilty of coincidental associations. A 
It's like, uh, for example, if somebody happens to you spend a lot of time at a certain store, maybe they work there. People might joke around and say, oh, you practically live there, man. It's situations like that. Now, before the commercial break, I mentioned that, like salamanders, fire elementals, there have been cases where in demonic hauntings, where shit caught fire for seemingly no reason. And usually this is because the demon itself is pretty pissed off and is trying to retaliate against whatever's going on. This may, may, being the operative word, give some credibility to the idea that there is some sort of evolution when it comes to spirits. As they've been, as the spirits have gone through the reincarnation cycles more, they've gone through lives more, they get a, get a bit more of a familiarity with the elements, with how reality works, how their abilities work, they might become something more. And there are demons that are associated with water, air, and earth, just the same as there are with the cliche of Hellfire. But again, like I mentioned in previous episodes, the term demon, if you go through all the cultures throughout history, the term demon was, wasn't a negative label, it was merely a way of saying spirit. There are good spirits and there are bad spirits. Over time, it is believed to be traced to the Catholic Church. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Anyway, what was I? Ah, yes. When it comes to the... How can I put this? The criticization... The criticization... The uh, flat-out bullying... The suppression... Of supernatural elements... Well... Mm. Yeah. Sorry. Some people don't know I do this show. Don't realize how I do this show. It's believed that by the time that when the church, when Christianity, specifically the Catholic Church, gained power, that a lot of things that aren't necessarily negative got put into a bad light. Which... Unfortunately, some of those beliefs still exist to this very day. Like, uh, people who freak out over the use of tarot cards, claiming that they summon demons. No, they don't. You probably think that angel cards are safer. No, they're not. They're the exact same thing. And I can go into a whole, 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 whole new episode on that. So we're going to put a pin in here right there. Now... See, I, I cover demons, spiritual progression, yeah. Anyway, as I mentioned before, there are demons for every quote-unquote element. There are demons that have specialties in nearly every situation. What seems to attract them varies. Some of them, you can just say their name a, a few times. Some of them, you have to go ritualistic. Some that you have to be, by birth, seems to have, seems like I have to make that specification nowadays. By birth, a certain gender, and not do that stupid thing where gender equality is uh, taken to extremist lengths. Uh, I'm just going to say that, that's how I call it, like I see it. But yet, there's more information about demons. It could very well be that elemental spirits and demonics could, in fact, be one and the same. 
That's how much we actually do not know. And like I said before, it's not like we're going to know unless we figure out some way to track light in a multi-dimensional space, which necessarily could happen. A friend of mine actually recently brought up, I don't know if I brought this up earlier, I had to split up the filming for this episode across two days, so if I'm repeating myself on something, just so, forgive me, but a friend of mine pointed out something interesting, that they figured out how to make 5D storage crystals. They're roughly the size of a contact lens and have an estimate of 367 terabytes of storage capability in the size of a contact lens. How is this possible? How quartz processes the information. A lot of myths and legends and conspiracies state that quartz, you know, crystal skulls, could potentially hold thousands and thousands of times greater information than our storage capabilities nowadays. Now, to give you a rough estimate on how much information this is, let's take old school DVDs. Not Blu-rays, but old school DVDs. In one terabyte of information, you could easily store roughly 1,500 DVD quality movies. And as I mentioned before, these new 5D storage crystals or discs or however they want to be call, called are 326 terabytes. One terabyte you can you could do constant surveillance around a typical house using four different cameras for roughly a year and still not run out of room. But in most cases storage capabilities like that usually overwrite older files. Because by general by a general common sense I'm sorry I'm being distracted by weird whining outside. The, uh, the general idea is that if it's an older file, hasn't been modified in a while, you're probably not needing it when it comes to situations like that. So, I want you guys to give this a consideration. I talked about how, in previous episodes, how if the idea that possessed individuals could give off an electromagnetic radiation that is several times what the average human puts out in their day-to-day -day life. This could be because of a being that's controlling them, so to speak. If they, if the same principles of their own body heat applied in their fifth dimensional world. Let's just go with that for right now. If the same uh, principles applied. Therefore, the heat would have more areas to be generated from, therefore more areas to radiate out to. Therefore, what could seem like, ooh, you're, you're a little warm, could be, oh my god, it's so hot, to us. I don't think a lot of people actually realize what the implications of five-dimensional storage devices actually entails. By being able to do this, we can prove that not only can it be done, but most likely already has been done on a cosmic scale. So therefore, if beings, like we have figured out ways to get in control of our environment, to alter things to how we see fit, which 
hasn't exactly proved to be the most useful, but let's just go with it. If we have been able to modify things within our three-dimensional space, who's to say that some sort of spirits that exist on four-dimensional, four-dimensional, five-dimensional, six-dimensional areas haven't figured out ways to do just the same. The abilities they have almost seem like magic, but yet it could very well be common science for them. It truly is a lot of think, a lot to think about, and we have all these groups that are trying to come up with the new equipment in order to test all these theories. The reality of it may be, we might not be able to come up with anything that comes close to the potential, and that's the fact on that. At least for the time being, we actually don't know what's out there. Now, if you believe that you have, potentially have, demonic or elemental spirits haunting you, or if you've had encounters, feel free to get a hold of me or your local ghost hunting team. I uh, would recommend trying to do some thorough research on everybody first before you settle on somebody, even, plus, uh, there's no... All the groups that are actually worth a damn usually don't, do not charge, so... There's no harm in researching to make sure you know you got someone who's actually halfway decent. The first sign that you got someone who's going to be a problem if they start asking for money. So it should go without saying, the world is a very strange place, my friends. And while we, we may be on the cups of discovering that many of our myths and legends may in fact be seated within truth, there's so much more to be found out. Whether we determine that demons are in fact real, like it seems we are on the verge of discovering the truth about the very Loch Ness Monster. Whether we find that there's an actual life force behind the natural elements. Whether they are beings from beyond our realm. Or entirely new life forms yet to be categorized by science. The potentials are quite thrilling in my opinion. But I'm afraid that is all the time we have for today. Next week, we have two new episodes of Specialist of the Strange Radio Show to continue this mini-series leading up to a very special appearance from my old ghost hunting team, the Paranormal Raider Force. On Wednesday, we're going to have an episode of Dakota's Declassified, Standard Procedures on Meditation. This was actually a request from a viewer just like you. The night following Friday, we are going to have the science of exorcism. How it may be possible to use scientific methods to determine whether or not demonic influence is truly a factor. And based on some of the test results we've had and some of the research my colleagues and I have got brought together we may just have something that will change the game then we will lead up eventually lead up to a case codenamed hell on Harrison Street 
where you will get to meet my old team members. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have ideas for future installments, please do let me know. Comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow us on our, across our social media pages. You can find all the links to do that in the episode description. My name is Dakota Franson. I will see you next time, my friends.